And all today we have a short discussion about um, the Jenkins distribution uh, packaging service. This is a GSOC project idea which has been uh, proposed by Rick, who is on the call. So we will uh, just uh, use um, uh, this opportunity to think up about the project ID and about uh, our expectations. Because in fact, uh, there were two parallel discussions, one in the mailing list and in JSOC channels. And another track was um, at the contributor summit in Brussels, uh, where we discussed pretty much the same idea, but from different angle. So, I wanted to use this meeting as an opportunity to align uh, with regards to expectation and maybe to build um, a more detailed uh, proposal uh, or document which would uh, include uh, expectations from both sides. Uh, does it make sense? Yeah, perfectly. <clears throat> yeah. So, did everyone have a chance to read uh, this meeting notes from Brussels? Uh, I didn't have read it because mm -hmm. my, due to my network. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my understanding, yeah, there was not that much documentation here anyway, but we've got some. And Chris, did you have a chance to go through this proposal? Um, I might have briefly looked at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, since I participated in both stories, so my understanding that here we try to build the service with some examples of what would be included. The discussion at the contributor summit was rather about how uh, to define the packages and what should be inside there. Uh, so, yeah, these stories are definitely complement uh, each other. And I was wondering whether we could uh, just set some expectations here so that uh, students reading uh, uh, through this project uh, basically follow the expectations uh, also defined at the Contributor Summit. So basically a concept of meta packages for different technologies and purposes. And also, because we discussed here, uh, I have a question yeah. about the match packages and and mm -hmm. uh, and I think I don't have fully understand uh, what is match packages. Uh, so it's like um, imagine a package that doesn't have any code of its own, but basically it's just a manifest, and that manifest specifies all the uh, all the packages it will depend on. So if you install the meta package, then it installs all of the dependent packages. Uh, it's uh, just like a, a project that just contain a home uh, dot xml, right? Yeah, um, that would be a good example. Yeah. So in Jenkins, we have uh, some examples of that. For example, there is pipeline aggregator plugin. Uh, basically, mm, yeah. Uh, I guess it's called just pipeline. Okay. Yeah, it's just called pipeline. So this plugin doesn't include any functionality on its own, but it pulls in uh, dependencies, which are pipeline. And basically, if you install this, let's say, meta package, you get uh, all the pipeline plugins uh, for core functionality. Uh, so, yeah. so uh, about this idea, uh, maybe different uh, use cases like uh, AWS or GitHub will have several metadata package projects, right? Yeah, conceptually, there would be one meta package for each cloud provider. Um, and then for for stuff like VCS, I guess you could bundle up the, um, the multi-branch thing and the GitHub kind of checkout thing, and that would be a GitHub meta package, if that made sense. Okay. Uh, from my uh, point, uh, um, we need to consider uh, Data, uh, database uh, 
uh, of course, GitHub uh, can be a database or you can use like a, a MySQL or other SQL database. Uh, uh, because uh, if we have uh, a lot of a lot of um, meta packages projects, maybe uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's, it's good or, or bad. Just want to hear what you think. Um, it would be reasonable to shortlist um, some of the popular ones. Like um, a lot of people will want the AWS thing because they're running Jenkins on AWS and a lot of people will want the Azure equivalent because the Jenkins is on Azure. Um, so you could, um, and indeed I think there is already a mechanism. Um, when you first start up Jenkins, it, it suggests packages that you should have. Um, I think Jesse sent that to us in the email thread. Yeah, there is installation um, wizard. Uh, this yeah. installation wizard is a bit outdated. Yeah. What we recently started doing in the documentation seek. So we are working the plugin side. And yeah, just a few days ago, we added the technology labels. So for example, now you can search for AWS plugins, for Asia plugins, or Google Cloud, or several other technologies. And we started grouping these plugins. So for example, here you can see a bunch of plugins for Asia. Mm -hmm. um, this is just the first step and hopefully we will expand that to the installation wizard and to the plugin manager, but uh, it's yet to be done. Okay. So, so it was made possible because now we support um, a top, uh, GitHub topics as a source of labels. Mm -hmm. So we can pull in a lot of information and now plugin maintainers can easily manage that. So hopefully in um, a few months we will get a good database which we can use for other stories. Yeah, I think I just announced it yesterday. Jarvis! Uh, yeah, it's making your plugins discoverable with labels and GitHub topics. But yeah, I hope that uh, you could use some results of these uh, stories. For, mm -hmm. So, Rick, your concern was about the uh, backup functionality, etc., right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, one of the difference of what is documented here. Uh, so, yeah, ship Jenkins bundles with Shop Fine Tuned for common use cases. So, it includes Jenkins plugins and extra configurations. So, my understanding of the meta package originally was that it would also include uh, configurations so that we could uh, get. Okay, how I call them ready to fly Jenkins images. I think I've like in my head at least I've scaled that back a bit to make like the pack the meta packages more sort of single mm -hmm. responsibility. Um mm -hmm. I suppose I mean meta packages could exist without the distribution customizer service. Um providing there was a way to version pin, which there is not currently um in a standard plugin. Um mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I've kind of cut their definition down a bit, at least in in my view. Um, and then the thing that bundles sort of config to make it ready to fly Jenkins is, um, I mean, we, we've, we've got Jenkins X for Kubernetes, and that is a distro, if you like, ready to fly mm. on, on that platform. Um, so generalizing whatever that's doing, um, to allow people to pre-pack like configurations and stuff, that would certainly be a component of the distribution customizer service. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, what's uh, Rick documented here? So common configuration yeah. and other things. Mm -hmm. So would it? So would it uh, include a sort of a builder section where users could build their own? custom Jenkins with a maybe simple user interface that allows even normal who are not much familiar with Jenkins configuration as code and um, sort of configuration management as such to be able to configure their own custom Jenkins package or instance? I think there is definitely an idea to have uh, like a, a user interface for, for doing it, yeah. 
I mean, so okay, it's uh, rather a service, but yeah, if you can uh, run this service on your own, then I guess it addresses uh, the tooling use case as well. Okay, uh, so so basically, if I understand correctly, you we would want the service to be able to sort of have I mean make it uh, make certain Jenkins distributions that are most commonly used like the AWS one or the GitHub one more accessible to users. Or is um, it allowed just to build their own Jenkins service? Uh, I mean service, I mean instance. I With their custom plugin. It could do both, right? If it if it can allow anyone to specify their own Jenkins setup, then presumably it, the the outcome of that can be saved and then stored somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me just write that down. Yeah, it was um, listed somewhere. Uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, was the the trade. So here um, there is a message from Ramon about uh, central about a way to share configurations, etc. So yeah, share. Yes, I think we can have. Yeah, we can have two parts of the um, like a, a solution. One of it uh, comes from maybe like uh, officials. Uh, another part is. Uh, comes from uh, users. We do not guarantee the quality or uh, risks. Just uh, mm -hmm. we can uh, we can store the solution. Maybe other users can find uh, one of them and uh, just uh, reuse it. Mm -hmm. So I think we need a database to store. Uh, the history record. Mm -hmm. could, could, could that be done via GitHub repositories, much like the way Helm charts are defined for Kubernetes? Yeah, it could be. So, um, yeah, I can uh, show you example how it's done now, now for some projects. Okay. okay. Uh, probably good. not the best. Start from the Spring Boot documentation. You mean uh, Jenkins for Spring Boot or what? No, the quick start section, oh. there's a link. Yeah, so uh, you mean Spring Boot uh, Builder? Just a second, I'll find it. That could be an example. Mm -hmm. Is it in this? Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's, yeah, if you just type the Spring Boot quick start, you'll probably get it. Yeah, you can find definitely the remember the... this service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spring Boot Initializer. So this is the service which yeah, yeah, is yeah. Uh, usually presented uh, by Josh Long when he says uh, build uh, jars, not works, or something like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, so here you can select uh, languages you want to use, some technologies. Uh, I guess you can uh, request some dependencies uh, like uh, yeah, okay, Octa, why not? Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, after that, you can uh, generate uh, your setup. So, for example, Love for Java 13, why not? You can click a uh, button and you get uh, this demo which is generated with all these specifications. Uh, yeah. This is what uh, this service uh, does. And if I understand correctly, um, uh, the idea by Rick was to have something like that, uh, but which would generate yes, specifications yes. for custom work packager, right? Yes, we can imagine that uh, we use Jenkins, like we go to a supermarket, we just pick up what we want. Maybe we don't need too, too much about the, the, the details of the technology, we just um, for example, we want to uh, use Jenkins under uh, Java 11, and then we want to the, we want the Jenkins run uh, in a Kubernetes cl cluster, and uh, other things. Then uh, the user just uh, click the button and get what he wants. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it would be interesting. The, um, yeah. There was a line that you highlighted in uh, the email chain the, the share your Jenkins configuration, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so that almost is what our central tooling team does in our workplace. So we have like this team that works on producing a standard Jenkins template, which then um, product teams because currently we don't have a centralized Jenkins and the understanding is the teams, the product teams run their own. Um, they pull from this template, um, a sort of ready to fly Jenkins. Um, they plumb in sort of, you know, they get up API key to let it start cloning things and um, off they go, or at least that's the theory. Um, and because we run our stuff on AWS, not mm -hmm. Kubernetes yet, um, that tends to be, that's a big pile of Terraform and uh, the Jenkins YAML thing, the configuration of the um, yeah. plugins are pre-installed. I don't know if the team's using custom or packager or if they're mm -hmm. just shoving them on a Docker image. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of what we have at the moment. That's our in-house. Um, share your Jenkins, if you like. Um, and it's, of course, massively laborious to do at the moment. Yeah. There are dozens of different uh, shared configurations uh, in the net, uh, which are based on Docker packaging. So for example, this is just one uh, my old demo, which basically extends uh, Jenkins Docker image in standard base, injects YAML there, and you get everything working. Uh, yeah, custom work packager was uh, one step forward because custom work packager intended uh, to switch uh, all these custom scripts so you can see that there is shells there but there is docker file and other things so uh, the intention of custom work packager was to provide a single yaml based definition uh, which would uh, define what you want to get in your jenkins so here you can see that you specify a word file you can specify plugins uh, configuration as code like that or just by including text and then you get your instance running defined by a single config. And since it's YAML, it would be more compatible with Helm charts and with other things like, let's say uh, one could create a special operator in Kubernetes for Jenkins or special Helm chart with user and kids as a configuration. So that's a way we were having this custom work package as a definition. And well, a tool right now is a new alpha because I started doing major rework and I put it in alpha just because I want to change the format, uh, but the tool is there and it's usable. And then, yeah, there are some examples uh, in public which demonstrate using it for packaging Jenkins. But yeah, in this case, there is still a lot of files on the top of that, uh, but still uh, there is a config which actually looks like that because I use POMXML as an input. I'm using Dependabot to bump my plugin dependencies and same for other files. So it's probably not uh, really cool as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, the service is there. So if somebody wants to just explore uh, how it could be done by a single configuration, uh, yeah, you can uh, take a look at that. And yeah, there is a bunch of demo for different cases. So, uh, so I was working on a proof of concept with the custom war package. Could uh, I mean, could we? So basically, uh, maybe we could take in from the user interface or the front end what sort of plugins and configurations that the user needs, and then generate the 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 YML file, and then the custom war package could just take that YML file and generate the instance. That'd be a good proof of concept. I mean, for this project. Yeah, it could be possible. Okay. Moreover, mm -hmm. well, we have some examples of tools doing that. For example, uh, there is support core plugin. Uh, plugins from Kinsayo support core. Uh, so this plugin uh, generates support uh, bundles. For example, uh, we use them for support purposes, but it's uh, generally handy for different kinds of analysis. And uh, it uh, also generates a Docker file, which allows to partially create the instance. 
without full configuration, but uh, yeah, it dumps Docker files, uh, plugin lists, and other things. So you can partially recreate uh, the user's instance. And uh, yeah, if you want to create something more uh, sophisticated, which exports uh, the Jenkins definition, it's totally possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Stadion is definitely experienced with the JCask YAML export by now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. This project. Uh, but yeah, it's a separate uh, set of export. Yeah, definitely. So I, I was, maybe I could try building a proof of concept for this project while making my proposal. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in this project. So yeah, any sort of pointers, helpers would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, it will definitely make the life of our tooling team easier because um, while the YAML is quite easily human readable, guessing what the hell goes in it is uh, a bit of a game. Um, so the nice thing with a, a UI for generating it is it takes the guesswork away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess UI is what is actually, well, uh, this proposal includes UI and uh, front end part. Oh, yeah, I closed it. Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, it would be nice uh, to have a boss eventually. So, oh, personally, I'm not a front-end developer at all. Uh, so somebody else uh, could provide insights how it could be built. But yeah, as Rink uh, uh, said, uh, Spring examples and the other configurator examples could be a good uh, source of inspiration. Okay, one question I had, could we use the installation wizard for using, does it provide a sort of front end for, for uh, taking in all of the common plugins? Because when I install the instance, I guess the installation wizard does provide us with the most commonly used plugins, right? Mm, it provides most commonly used plugins, but it uh, doesn't provide plugin sets per se. Okay. So for example, uh, yeah, I can just launch it probably. Do I have Dr. Ryan? I have no idea which version I go. I'm going to run. Ah. Okay. Okay, I'll clean it up later. Sorry. Yeah, I can just show it. Uh, but yeah, the main problem with the current setup wizard is that uh, it provides you suggestions, but after you see these suggestions, uh, it's still uh, not, uh, there is no meta packages, uh, which Chris was referring to. So if somebody wanted to implement that, it's still uh, needed uh, on the installation wizard. So it might be an interesting feature. The um, the key sticky thing with uh, the meta packages um, is the versioning, um, the ability to pin the versions um, to ensure the stuff works together. And um, as Jesse pointed out, that doesn't currently work on community Jenkins because everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, there are some examples. Uh, for example, Jesse was working on a bill of materials for plugins. Yeah. So these build materials uh, mostly focuses pipeline ecosystem because yeah, test the dependency for pipelines is a nightmare to manage. So JC was mostly addressing this use case. Uh, but yeah, technically something like that could apply it on the user side. So there is a repository, Jenkins uh, CI bomb. So somebody could implement the same uh, pipeline for testing and automatic dependency updates, let's say for AWS plugins. Uh, well, taken, uh, if you have good CI for that, uh, then yeah, it could be run in mostly an automatic way. I wonder if we might end up with the case if the bot, if there are two separate bombs, so this one and say one for AWS, that um, if, if there are any shared dependencies between them and there are incompatibilities, then um, the, the two bombs will sort of conflict with it. Each other. Um, I don't have a good answer to this question because yes, <laughs> they will. It's really annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Cloudbees uh, resolves that by having a super uh, package of something like 200 plus plugins, which we uh, provide as Cloudbees Assurance Program. 
So we integrate, uh, do integration testing of everything together. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to have meta packages, it would be a separate story. Yeah, um, and uh, I kind of wonder how much value there is in the meta packages if, if we can't pin versions, um, because the idea is that they should improve the reliability and the experience. And if, if someone installs it and they go, oh, hey, AWS plugin X doesn't work with AWS plugin Y, then then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a great developer experience. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But at the same time, uh, yeah. something is better than nothing. This because right now you have to figure out uh, dependencies between all plugins. And yeah. at least, uh, with meta packages, at least you would have some domains so that uh, you would know where the intersection, where the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be probably mitigated by proper organization of meta packages. So for example, pipeline, uh, core pipeline plugins could be a single meta package, like uh, what is pipeline aggregator doing, uh, more or less. And uh, technology packages like Kubernetes, Docker could be built on the top of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's yet to be implemented. Uh, your starting point, yes, there is installation wizard. But yeah, I would argue that it doesn't get you where you would like to get. So you can see that it's basically just a set of recommended plugins. And uh, since uh, we didn't really spend much time on uh, keeping it up to date, so let's say one uh, wants to use Jenkins with Docker, you don't have a way to do it here. Okay. So for me, uh, that's why I started uh, from labeling and grouping plugins on the plugin side and update center side, because eventually it could uh, at least provide data at least uh, for making such decisions. Right yeah. now, there is no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll just kill it. So wrapping, so wrapping the custom wall packager using a REST API would probably serve some of our purposes while, while at least downloading, I mean, at least providing users with an interface to at least install the most used plugins using a sort of simple user interface than a YAML file. Yeah, it could uh, solve the issue. So one thing you would need to keep in mind, um, and it's for your information, Rick, uh, that custom work packager, even if it provides Docker file. So technically, uh, in your service, you can spin a container which builds uh, an image for user. The problem is Docker packages, because right now it doesn't support to Docker in Docker. Uh, and custom work packager just generates a Docker file. So if you wanted to run it inside Docker, you would need to some, have something like Panic and whatever which is totally possible, but it's not how it's working now. Mm -hmm. So right now it's just uh, generates Docker file like if you run it inside container. Does GitHub still have issues today? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yesterday shields were just crazy because of GitHub REST APIs. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so mm -hmm. so could could it could custom instead of just I mean uh, when you run certain scripts or run uh, run CLI, it does download a file. So could could this could this service just run on a uh, I mean separately, where it does allow you to download a sort of file or something? I don't know if I'm making sense, but <laughs> I'm not following right now. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, I don't know how to put it, but um, if you mean it will save the generated YAML file just as a download in in the browser rather than generating the war itself? Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, how would we obtain the? I mean, how would we obtain the war file? Right, that's the. I mean, we could. How would you like just like just like this spring initializer gives us an entire zip file to download just on the same lines? How would the um, how would we actually download 
maybe have a downloadable file for the mm -hmm. So uh, there are two parts. Uh, one part is yeah, that you can, so here you don't generate a project for yourself. It doesn't provide you jars. It just okay. provides you a project definition. Same, okay. uh, the service could uh, generate, uh, for example, what I have here. It's just a configuration which uh, includes a bunch of stuff. Uh, but basically this is configuration which you can take and build on your own. But it's ready to go, so it's click a button. Uh, well, run, you can run a make file and get uh, the image built. Okay. Uh, so one of the ways for the service is to not provide uh, word files or Docker files or Docker images, but just provide definition so you can build it uh, on your own. Uh, if you want to provide a build service which actually builds uh, the packages, then you would need to run customer packages inside your service. Yes, exactly. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's doable, but it opens a lot of questions like spinning additional containers in the service, all kinds of security questions if you wish. Um, yeah, you could uh, deploy these artifacts somewhere, but uh, these artifacts, firstly, custom work packages takes a while uh, to complete. Yeah. Uh, so, it, uh, well, uh, not that long, but it may take 10, 20 minutes sometimes, uh, depending on your configuration complexity. Uh, so, yeah, it would be a more challenging part. So, if, if somebody was working on this project, I would recommend uh, to split it to phases. One phase just generates configuration, and on the after that, you could work on the build service. Okay, thank you so much. That helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, Rick, what do you think about that? Uh, you mean the. The service just uh, provides the config file, right? Mm, yeah, as a first step. Mm, I think uh, the I think it's okay, but uh, uh, we can I think we can also provide uh, the binary file. I mean, uh, user just uh, can get a uh, tickets dot uh, wr fair or docker image. And I, I know that we are, um, that need a lot of resource to build the fair, maybe uh, amount of storage, mm, but uh, uh, maybe we, we just can do not provide the service from the public service, but if we, if the project have the ability, uh, ability to uh, build them, uh, maybe the users can um, like deploy the, this custom service in their environment to build their own uh, dot war. That will be uh, very helpful. Do you under do you get my point? Yeah, you're right. Uh, it may be difficult. Well, uh, uh, we can have an alt goal, full packaging service, that's for sure. It's just uh, quite difficult to implement it as a first phase because uh, there is a lot of hidden stones. Mm -hmm. uh, and second phase, for example, will require uh, quite different skills because first step, you just build this uh, generator. It can be uh, written in pure JavaScript, in pure Go, whatever you like. Uh, but when it comes uh, to the service itself, yeah, you will need uh, to likely create a Helm chart for that. You will need to resolve security questions. If you want to host it within Jenkins uh, IO infrastructure, then uh, you will need to talk to infrastructure team about that. And uh, yeah, you know, right, uh, we were resolving a lot of budgeting issues recently. So onboarding uh, new services, uh, while it's possible, um, it will require significant discussion. So if you put uh, the build service as a first step, it may just require a lot of extra effort. Mm. Okay. Well, I agree with you that it uh, has value. It has a lot of value actually, but uh, it's difficult to uh, uh, eat uh, this pie in one piece. I would also say like um, for this, like our tooling team can run the build steps for like the compiling the Jenkins images and that in their sleep. But what they spend most of the time on is guessing 
what's meant to go in the YAML file. So stage one, at least for us, is where most of the, the value would come from. Um, and also we probably have some requirements around like um, the actual build step because we've got stuff like um, Playfrog X-Ray and all of that coming in. So like our enterprise wants to track, you know, put your code where I can see it, please. Um, rather than kind of getting a remote service to compile the war and then handing to, handing it to us and it's kind of a black box. Um, so for transparency, we probably only use the step one bit anyway, I think. Okay. But we're a large enterprise, so um, others have different needs. Okay, yeah, the phase one requirement by Oleg sounds like a plan because then you would just have to maybe parse a sort of have a front end and then maybe generate a YAML file or a Docker image and then as a phase two, you could probably focus on the build service. That just shot up the required skills of the project tenfold. <laughs> yeah. for, for brownie points and possibly to increase the work again, um, uh, a lot of the time is spent guessing what, um, what plugin configuration is meant to go in. Um, so not, not the configuration of the core itself, because you can go and read one set of docs pretty much and work that out. It's say like if I want to use like even my own plugin, the AWS credentials provider thing. Well, what configuration do I have to put in to Jenkins YAML? Okay, I've got to go off and read the plugin README, and hopefully the plugin also remembered to document that. Um, so, if there was some way to kind of inspect the plugin configuration classes um, automatically and work out what is meant to go in there um, as a kind of scraper or harvester process that that would certainly help help users though it would be quite ambitious we have a separate project idea for that too <laughs> yeah well, it could be probably split to two project ideas if uh, we can find mentors because yeah, some other bits could be detached. Uh, but yeah, at least doing some parts um, now would be interesting. So in a GSOC project, you set up a project idea. And this project idea may involve uh, various directions, uh, various goals, and basically we expect students to come up uh, uh, with uh, their proposal based on this uh, list of ideas. So even if you think that uh, the, pro uh, the project is bigger than uh, what can be done in JSOC, it's not a blocker, it just needs to be explicit in the project definition. Yeah. And yeah, from what I see, there are a lot of people in the thread uh, who are interested to work on that <laughs> even outside JSOC, so yeah, who knows. Uh, uh, again, yeah. student could be uh, participating in a bigger team as long as uh, the effort by the student um, is elated and can be evaluated separately. It's not a problem. Yeah. Sounds cool, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that sort of ends the questions from me, but do we want to edit this this project idea or is this fine? I mean, since we're splitting it in two phases, would we want that to be reflected on the site? Well, if somebody could comment on that, it would be a good improvement. Cool. Maybe I could do that. Yeah. You feel free to coordinate with uh, Rick, uh, and yeah, if Rick is on board with uh, such changes, then yeah, we can just update the project idea. Yeah, sure. Sounds cool then. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so, I could get in a draft idea for this proposal because I was just working on my proposal. I think I put it in the mailing list, but after this discussion, I guess there are significant changes to be made to that. So yeah, I'll uh, submit it probably by the end of next week or something.
Mm, yeah, or you can just work on your proposal drafts because okay. uh, yeah, we can publish recording of this meeting so that it okay. can uh, provide additional information to potential students. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just to be clear, uh, Sladin, it's not your responsibility to update a project idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. It would be much appreciated because it's also a contribution to the project. Uh, yeah. But yeah, your main goal is to create your proposal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Though, uh, keeping all the information public is important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, thanks a lot for exploring this area. Um, is there anything I can help with with regards to additional information or maybe some alignment? So, Chris, if I somehow can help with meta package definition, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, I also think that we could just keep uh, discussing that. And uh, I hope uh, to send uh, an email by Monday with a summary. So maybe we'll uh, restart this discussion uh, in the uh, thread uh, started by Rick. So I will explicitly point to there so we don't uh, um, create duplication. It's already read it, uh, referenced here in the top. So yeah, we can uh, find more collaborators, I hope. Mm. I'm sure they're out there because so many people uh have to deal with this stuff either manually or whatever, but um, coaxing them out of their hiding holes is... Yeah, you can see my demo repository was for, for uh, 45 times. And yeah, some of uh, your demos, but if you navigate to some repositories, you can see that people just fork it and start hacking. Mm. And then yeah, if we had a more supported uh, an official way to do that, it would be an improvement because it was just a proof of concept by me at some point, which kind of works. Um, mm -hmm. Relating to the, um, the the Helm charts that are packaged up with Jenkins X, um, it, I'm, I'm trying to delineate in my mind like what the AWS equivalent of that looks like. Um, mm -hmm. Because obviously, um, because like you could imagine a Kubernetes meta package um, in in the registry, uh, like the aggregate say the Kubernetes credentials provider and mm -hmm. the Kubernetes like build agents and all of that. Um, but it wouldn't be enough um, to get going with, and that's why we have a full Jenkins distribution for Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if like for the AWS equivalent, okay, we can have an AWS meta package, but it's not quite enough to get you started because yeah. you still have to have all like the surrounding Terraform and whatnot to scaffold the server into existence. Yeah, at some um, point uh, there was a project, be, sorry. Would it warrant a, a kind of a full equivalent Jenkins for, for AWS? Um, if so, what, what would we put in it? above and beyond just the meta package of AWS plugins. Because um, Kubernetes at least has the benefit that, you know, everybody uses Helm charts or whatever, and it's sort of one standard, but um, not everybody uses Terraform to put stuff on Amazon. Some people use CloudFormation or uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the projects that you could take a look at is uh, Jenkins Evergreen. And so yeah, it's uh, a bit uh, um, <clears throat> obsolete and it's archived because we uh, shut down the infrastructure in uh, late uh, January. Uh, but uh, it was exactly an attempt uh, to provide um, a solution for AWS with some uh, optimist, uh, with some uh, goals like having continuous delivery to these instances. But if you deep dive, you can find that uh, there are uh, Docker files which package Jenkins with a set of plugins. 
and uh, then uh, there are some verification flows which uh, prepare this list of plugins. So uh, they don't use custom work packager internally. Instead of that, uh, they use uh, their own scripting. Well, custom work packager was created later than Evergreen. Uh, but uh, final result is basically the same. They have some dependency management, some CI. They prepare package specific to AWS. They also pre-configure things like dependency on S3 buckets and other things. So uh, out of the box, you get some kind of other environment and you can run it. So uh, the repository is still around. So some bits could be reused. It, it definitely does sound a lot of it would be useful to us. Probably. Um the thing that would have knocked it on the head is the, you know, continuous, always up to date on the bleeding edge of, of plugins, which is, I mean, that would have made it unusable for us. We, we, just couldn't, we couldn't have that. Although the idea is cute to kind of, I suppose it's like the Arch Linux of Jenkins, always up to date. Um, and the downside is always up to date. But if, if the um, kind of the evergreen bit was removed, then I suppose it would be packaging Jenkins for AWS and that would be handy. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So um, we can just explore these options. Uh, I'm not sure. So evergreen uh, folks are still around in the community, so they could probably provide some insights. Okay. Or if somebody wants to detach uh, AWS, let's say meta package or whatever story to a separate project, it's totally doable. Yeah, I understand that continuous delivery is uh, really complicated, but we can uh, get some uh, bits of, of that. Uh, maybe use dependency management. Mm -hmm. If I can help you that, uh, yeah, I'll do my best. Okay. So, Chris, how would you like to organize this work for AWS? Do you want to keep it independently from uh, GSOC or would you prefer to somehow get alignment? and to have it as a reference implementation? Um, well, uh, no, no one will ever say no to a glorious robot army of GSOC students to do work for them. <laughs> the question is, uh, uh, how, how on earth can that work? Um, what, mm -hmm. what would alignment involve? Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the choke points is about uh, production readiness because what you need is definitely a production ready template, a production ready definition, and your team's already uh, got to load uh, towards uh, this way. So I wouldn't expect uh, our first packs to be really uh, ready. But uh, maybe what we could do is, uh, for example, if your team is interested to open source some bits of your shared configurations, mm. and maybe see whether we could uh, convert them to templates gradually. It, uh, could I, be I was about to um, suggest that actually we could open the source the kind of shared your config thing that we've got, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. sanitize it so it might just be a static snapshot of it. Um, and then you can kind of go through that and go, okay, we can reuse this and that and know that bit looks else a bit specific. So we can do that. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the tooling team will be happy to do that. That's great. And the, even in the beginning, it would be a great case study because everybody can deep dive and see what are the issues in the field. Because yeah, I have some pet projects which use com custom work packages, etc. But I have to admit that uh, I don't have big production instance powered by uh, that flow. So some information would be definitely useful. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So, Rick, what do you think? Uh, 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 this I just lost uh, uh, a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, 
Did you get uh, enough information from this meeting, or would you address some other? Would you like to address some other topics? Mm, I think it's enough for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, yeah, thanks to everybody. Uh, if you want, I can publish this meeting, uh, let's say on the JSOC channel, or I can just publish it uh, as unlisted. So just share a link uh, so you can have more information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this meeting was really helpful. Thank you so much for your time, Oleg, Chris, and Rick. Yeah, and thank you too. Yeah, it was a bit uh, chaotic and uh, sorry for the late uh, proposal about the meeting. Uh, but yeah, maybe we could meet again, uh, let's say, in a couple of weeks or months, uh, once we have more details. Uh, once the uh, slide, for example, has a proposal draft, so we can uh, review that and maybe map other stories. Yeah, definitely. I will do that as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thanks all. Okay, let's Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.